Before we jump in on how to use Google Calendar, how to invite people, create events, create different calendars, I wanna go through some Google Calendar navigation so you know where things are at on your screen. So go ahead, grab your cursor, open up Google Calendar, and let's go. Over in the top left, we have the main menu. What this does, and when we click on it, it'll actually remove our left sidebar or open our left sidebar. You'll have the option right here. When you click on today, it automatically goes to pulls your calendar. So you'll can see here that we're on the 22nd. Next, you'll have a left and a right arrow. You can go back a month or forward a month, depending on how you have your view set up. You can have a day, a week, a month, a year, a scheduled. So let's do a week and you'll see that I have a week scheduled here. And if I go right or left, it'll just move a week at a time. I'm gonna go back to month view. Over here on the right hand side, we have a search. So I can search any event in my calendar by name or date and that will pull up there. To get back to just non-search, click over here. If I have support questions, you can go here, training, updates, feedback, different things like that. Here we have the settings menu. We can adjust a lot of different things in our settings, the density, the color, the print. We can get add-ons through the Google App Store um, or the extension store. Again, we already showed you how to change the view of your calendar. Again, down here you have the option to show weekends, show declined events. I'm gonna turn those back on. Up here you have your Waffle or your Google Apps where you can move things around here. You'll have your connected domain account over here. You'll have your connected domain account over here on the right. You'll have the Workspace sidebar and any uh, external add-ons or extensions. You can see here that I've added Zoom for Google Suite over here in the right sidebar. I have another tutorial on the Workspace sidebar if you wanna go over there. Going back over to the left, over here we have the option to create events. That's one way that we can create an event. We have a month view calendar here that actually doesn't adjust your main view. So I can have September here and maybe I'm planning things in July for September. I can see what that calendar looks like ahead of time. I can meet with specific people. Now this may not be connected with your domain. It depends on what type of Google account that you have, but I can actually search for people in my organization and schedule a Google meet with them right from calendar. You'll see here that I have access to multiple calendars. I have a personal calendar. I have a school calendar. I have a teacher calendar. I have a district uh, calendar. I have reminders and tasks. You can also import other public calendars like holidays or sports teams or events happening in different cities. Uh, we'll show you how to do that later. And there's other calendars that I'm actually connected with, but I hide those because I don't necessarily want to see them. This overall is what you see when you go to calendar.google.com. Next, I'm going to show you how to add events. Adding an event in Google Calendar is very easy. When you pull up calendar.google.com, you'll have two options to create an event. You can create an event here by clicking on the big create sign. This will open up a new pop-up window. We want to type the name of the event. We have some other options here. We can put out of the office, we can make this a task which shows up on our calendar or other people's if we invite them as guests. We also can create appointment slots. There's a lot of people that have questions that say this is no longer an option. This is an option. It just might not be an option on your domain, meaning your company, your school, your district is not paying for that option. Appointment slots is a beautiful thing and we'll talk more about that when we go to tricks and tips. Here, right here where we have the date and time, we can click here and we can adjust anything that we want. We can adjust it to the 23rd. When we click on time, we can click a beginning time and an end time. We can also just make it an event that's an all day event. Maybe it's an all day party. We also have the option, and we'll get into more details a little bit later, about how often we want this event to appear. Do we want it daily, weekly, monthly? Do we want it on the third Tuesday of every other week, Tuesday or Thursday for the next six weeks? You can do a lot of different things with these options. Find a time. 
depending on how your organization is set up and how other people have created their calendars, when you create an event, you'll be able to see the people that you're inviting and what they have on their calendar or their schedule for that day. So as we add a guest, we can just start typing in a name. Ammon is another principal that I work with. And you'll see that he has some events on his calendar and it also pulled up my personal events. When you add a guest, you are the organizer. You'll see your information here. You'll see any guests that you have here. We can add a Google Meet link to this event. If we're an organization that has lots of different buildings or different rooms, you can actually add a room. You can add a location, which is awesome. It connects to Google Maps. I can add a specific description to this event. Maybe there's specific details about where it's at in the building or how to get to a specific room. I can also add an attachment. Maybe that's an agenda. Maybe that's a Google Doc. Maybe it's a worksheet. Maybe it's a PDF. I can add a lot of different files there. Here, I have the option to add it to a different calendar other than my personal calendar. So when I click on my name, that's my personal calendar, I have the option to put it on a different calendar. And you'll notice that the color of that calendar changes. I can put myself busy or free. I can change my default visibility, public or private. And I can also add a notification. When I click on add a notification, I can select for myself specific notification times for that. You can also do that globally in Google Calendar. We'll show you how to do that later in this tutorial. When I click make it a Zoom meeting, more options. When I click on more options, it'll take me back to this page. Once everything is done, I click save. I'm actually gonna take him off of this, click save. And you'll see that that event has been now put in my calendar. And you'll notice that it matches purple, the color here. How to add a guest to Google Calendar invites. It's pretty self-explanatory, but once we have the pop-up window in Google Calendar, we're gonna come down here to find add guests. We can start typing names and names in our organization and their email addresses will pop up. If you're not the organizer for the meeting, but you have permission to edit the event, you can follow steps to invite people to a meeting. However, if you're not the organizer of the event, you won't be able to invite people. If you create an event in Google Calendar and don't give guest permissions to modify the event, they can't change the event's date or time. Only their owner can do that. The other thing that you can also do is you can add in Google Groups mailing lists. For example, I've set up a list for my teachers. When I click on Kelsey Peak staff, it's now going to pull all of the names of the teachers from that contact in the Google Groups mailing list that I want to add to this event. And I'll show you how that works here. When I click there, all of those people's email addresses. Here, you can give your guest permissions to invite other people or to see the guest list. Maybe I don't want everybody to see who's coming to this event. You can also allow them to modify event. When I click there, it gives them the option to change this event's time and date. Depending on the type of meeting or event that you want to schedule, this comes in really handy. How to add rooms, location, or conferencing to a Google Calendar event. You'll see here, when we click on add rooms, our district has rooms available for different buildings. For example, 704 represents a high school, if I click here, you'll see that there are rooms that I should actually select to go into that high school to have that meeting. When I click on location, again, this is connected with Google Maps, I can start adding the address of the actual event or the name of the building. That just pulls up everything connected with Google Maps. The great thing about this is when you get the notification, you can click on that notification, it'll give you directions straight to that um, event and where it's located. I go back to my event and I wanna make it a Zoom meeting or a meet, I have that option. When I click here, I can do Google Meet, which is the default, or I can do the add-on, which is Zoom. Depending on your organization and what they have available for you, if I click on Meet, again, you'll see it'll create a Meet, the Meet link, that's there live. When you click on the down carrot arrow, it gives me the meet link here. It also gives me the phone number with the pin and the dial-in option there. 
how to add or edit the event description. So here you have the title of the event in the pop-up bar. Here we can get into more details. Again, this is a WYSIWYG. We can add bold, italics, underline. You can change a little bit of how that looks. We can insert a link here if we wanted to, or I can just copy and paste some text. There's some lorem ipsum text. I can insert a link. And you'll see there that I could copy and paste the web address there and the text to display in that link. I can also add attachments and there's a couple different attachment types that I can add. So when I click on add attachment, this should look familiar if you've been using Google. We can grab something from my drive. We can do shared drives, shared with me, or I can upload something with my, from my computer. If I grab that information from the high school, you'll see that that Google document is now there. And what this does is it actually automatically shares it with all the guests in that event. So they now have access to that document prior to the meeting starting, or when everybody jumps on the meet, they can have that document sitting in front of them. Next, I'm gonna show you how to change the event color, the calendar, and the default visibility. Normally, when we create a Google Calendar event, it's connected with a calendar, and that calendar, depending on your settings, will be a specific color. Well, Google now gives you the opportunity to change the color of an event. So as I have the event here, I can actually change that color to a different color. You'll notice that it's green, but I'm only showing the Jordan Virtual Learning Academy calendar. Normally, all of those events are purple. The reason that you would want to change that color is so that it sticks out from all of the other events. Maybe it's a very, very special event, or maybe it's a one-time occurring event. You'll have that option to do that. To add the event to a different calendar, right next to the color, we can click here to a different calendar. Notice the color still stays the same. It does not go to the default color. If you remember, my personal calendar was yellow. You might also be creating an event that you cannot attend. For example, I'm in charge of the calendar at the school. There are events sometimes that I am not going to or assigned to go to. I can actually make myself busy during that time so people know that I cannot attend that event. I also have the opportunity to change my visibility. If I share my calendar with others, my events may have the same privacy settings as my calendar. I can change what other people see. So I can make this event private or public. Why would you want to do that? Well, let me go back and show you. Here is our out-facing public calendar. So this is the calendar that our parents and students see on a regular basis about what's happening at school. It has vacations, it has days off, it has parent-teacher conference and other events. We don't want the parents to see what the teachers are doing throughout the week. They'll see days or collaboration days or it's so-and-so's birthday or different things like that. So I have those on two separate calendars. And you'll notice that as I show these calendars, some of them actually the events repeat because I have calendars that have the same event. For example, the teachers don't have school on this day. The community also needs to know that we don't have school that day. That's why there are two events talking about the same thing. How to set up notifications in Google Calendar. We talked in the navigation introduction here when we click on settings menu. Go ahead and click on settings menu. Click on settings. You have a lot of different settings here. This is its own video in itself. We can change our native language, our country, our default format. You'll see you have a couple different formats. Our time format, you can do 24 hour time, one time, we can change our time zone. I've actually clicked it so it automatically updates. If I take my laptop out of state or go with me on vacation to a conference, it will automatically show. I can click on the world clock view. Event settings. When I change it 15 minutes, my settings are saved and I go back. You can see now when I go in to click a calendar and find a time, that my events are now only 15 minutes long from 8.30 to 8.45. Well, if I go back to settings and I change this so they're 60 minutes long and save and go back and click an event, you'll see now that my calendar has hour long time slots. I personally keep mine at 30 minutes. My default guest permissions are to invite others in the see the guest list. I automatically add invitations to everything. So what that does is when I invite a person to a calendar invite, it sends them a Gmail or an email in Gmail inviting them to the event where they can click on yes, no, maybe, or attend virtually. I have desktop notifications turned on you can have alerts, you can turn them on. I keep mine just there. You can snooze events. 
You can also turn on sound notifications. As we scroll further down, you can see your view options. I can view weekends. I can show declined week events. I can show week numbers. I can display shorter events the same size as 30 minute events. I can reduce the brightness of past events. I can view calendars side by side in day view. This is where you can get specific about what your day looks like. Does your week start on a Saturday, Sunday, or a Monday? My custom view is four weeks long. Alternate calendars, you can see here that they have other calendars that you have the option to select. Events from Gmail. When I get invited to an event, I only want me to know about it. So on my personal account, it shows me information that nobody else can see. Working hours, this is a big one. I don't work on Sunday, I work in public education. I don't necessarily work on Saturday. This is great, this allows my calendar to be in a certain time. So when people invite me, it will notify them that that event is outside of my calendar time or calendar day. So I've taken Saturdays and Sundays off this list. Very rarely, maybe once or twice a year, do we have an event connected with the school that's on a Saturday or a Sunday. I also have the option to change my school time. So Monday, I put my availability from seven to nine. I work in a middle school and that's when most events happen. If you work at a high school, it might be from six to midnight. You have dances and early morning practices and different things like that. In an elementary, it might be eight to five. I can enable keyboard shortcuts. I will actually put a link in the description where you can see all of those enabled shortcuts. It's amazing and it saves you so much time once you learn those shortcuts. I can view my calendars offline. I don't necessarily need that option turned on for me. I have it connected with my phone and I get invites on my phone as well as my desktop and my laptop. Here it'll have a list of all your add-ons that are connected to Google Calendar. Why is that important? Well, let's show you. When I type in Google Calendar extensions, it'll take me to the Chrome Web Store. If I type in Calendar, I have a lot of different options for add-ons that work with Calendar. Obviously, in your domain, in your specific settings, your administrator may have blocked some of these. In this section of the Google Calendar tutorial, we're going to talk about how to respond and manage events, how to update an existing event, how to check guest attendance, how to delete an event, how to restore a deleted event, and you'll see the timestamps below in the description. When you create a new event in Google Calendar, you can invite specific guests. So I've invited myself. I'm going to save this event, and you'll see here that I have the option to send a email um, to that guest. So when I click on send, here's the event in my calendar that I'm sending from. When I go to the calendar of the invitee, you'll notice I'm in day view here. I have the event here in yellow. I can respond or accept this RSVP invitation in a couple of different ways. The first way is when I click on calendar, click on the event that I've been invited to, I can click on yes, no, or maybe. When I click yes, you'll notice that the calendar event changes to a solid color. When I click no, you'll see that it's striked out and it still has the white background. When I select maybe, it'll be solid, but it'll have gray lines to it. That's how you know if you're going, going, not going, or maybe going. I also have the option here as an invited guest to propose a new time or add a note. So let's say that 9.45 doesn't work for me. I can propose a new time and maybe change that to 10 to 11. And then I can send that proposal back. That proposal will go to the original event creator. So let's slide over there. You'll see here in this event, I have got a little time um, dot here. That means that somebody has proposed a different time. You'll also see in your inbox that the invitee or the guest has proposed a new time. So when I click on that, I can actually change that time or accept that time proposal. So I'll click accept. If I go back to my calendar, you'll see that that, that event is now from 10 to 11. It no longer has the little mark there. I'm obviously going now. If we go back to the guest invitation, you'll see that that time has been changed here. The other way to accept a calendar invite is by going to your inbox. You'll get an invitation here. When I click on the invitation, there's a little bit more information here. It's a little bit clearer. You'll see some things. I can click yes, maybe, no, 
more options. Again, I can propose a new timer, add a note. Over here, you'll also see your personal calendar and you'll see if there are any conflicts in your personal calendar. Now, if you have not given the invitees or the guests the ability to edit or respond, they will not have that option. They can only forward the meeting to other people if you have given them access to editing that calendar. You'll also see down here more details. I have the join with Google Meet. If there was a Zoom link, the Zoom link would be here. So once I click yes, and I go back to my calendar, you'll see that that has now turned to a solid yellow, meaning that I am attending that meeting. Next, we'll talk about how to update an existing meeting. To update an existing Google Calendar event or meeting, you simply click on the event. We'll get the pop-up window here. Click on the pencil icon to edit the event. And you'll see here that I have the option to edit the date, the time, the guests, I can add notes, I can add links, attachments, all of the information that I have here when I originally created the event, I now have access to change. So let's say I change this to 10.30 to 11.30. I click Save. It's now going to ask me, do I want to notify guests of this change so that they're aware that I'm changing the meeting? When I click send, you'll notice on my calendar, because I'm the creator, it's already updated from 10.30 to 11.30. You'll see here now that because the time has changed, I have to re-accept that invitation. That's gonna show up here in Google Calendar. It'll also show up in my inbox that I've updated the invitation and that I need to accept that invite. Once I click yes, go back to the calendar, you'll see that it turns to a solid yellow. Next, we'll talk about checking guest attendance in Google Calendar. How to check guest attendance in Google Calendar invites. When you select on your event, you can go down to your guest list and you'll see all the people that you've invited and you'll have totals of what those people have responded to or RSVP'd. So there are a couple things that you need to understand. A check mark means that they're going. An X means that they're not going. A question mark means maybe and then if it's blank, that means they have not responded to your invite yet. The great thing about this is you can actually copy all of these emails and send a separate email outside of Google Calendar if you needed to attach an image or a picture. You could also attach or copy them on something in a Google Calendar that you needed them to see. Depending on what how you've set up your Google Calendar invite, guests may be able to invite other guests. If you haven't given them that ability, then they will not be able to invite other guests. The key point is to understand that a check mark means yes, an X means no, question mark means maybe, and grayed out means that they have not decided yet or responded to that meeting. How to delete an event in Google Calendar. Click on the event and just click the trash can. It's gonna ask if you want to send emails to the people that are attending or have been invited. I would click send you'll notice that that calendar event has now disappeared from my calendar. It also disappears from any of the guests that have accepted that calendar. You'll notice here, it's not on that calendar. You'll notice here, it's not on this calendar. When you delete an event, it deletes that event from everybody's calendar, all the contexts that have been connected with that. You can permanently delete an event by clicking on the settings button clicking on trash, you'll see that event here, and I can click on empty trash, and this will empty any events that I've deleted previously. A key note that after 30 days in the trash, Google automatically deletes these events. Let's say you made a mistake and you wanna restore that event. How to restore a deleted event in Google Calendar. Click on settings menu, click on trash, You'll see your deleted event. Remember, if it's been older than 30 days, it will automatically be deleted. You can click here, right here. You click on Restore YouTube Event. If I go back to my calendar, you'll see that it's on my calendar. What you won't see, though, is who's coming to the meeting. When you restore an event, you have to resend out the invites because it's been deleted from their calendar. It automatically does not re-add that to the calendar. So to make sure that I resend them out, once I've restored that event or that calendar, I can email guests. You can type a little email here, then click send. What you'll see 
if I go back to my inbox, there's the message here that that event has been re-added to the calendar. And again, it's here and I can mark whether I'm going yes, no, or maybe. How to view reminders in Google Calendar. If you come to Google Calendar, you'll see you have all of your calendars here. I have this one clicked, contacts. Reminders is right here. If you wanna see reminders, you can click or unclick them here. Let's show you how to create a personal reminder. The personal reminder may be connected to an event or a task or something like that. When I click add a new calendar invite, I can select task or reminder. Reminders don't have the option to add guests. I can choose a date and a time, 6.30. When I click save, that shows up on my reminder calendar. Reminders you create in Google Keep also show up in Google Calendar. Reminders that you create in Google Keep also show up in your calendar. So let me show you what that looks like. So we go to keep.google.com, come over here to Reminders, take a note, add a title. I can also add a picture, anything like that. I can change my day here. We'll do tomorrow evening at six o'clock. We'll click save. There's the reminder right there. If I go back to my calendar and I refresh, you'll see that I have that reminder right there. You'll also notice that Google Keep is part of the workspace sidebar on the right. You'll have that option to go back and forth between Keep. There's all of your reminders there. Next, I'll show you how to change a personal reminder in Google Calendar. We click on the event. We click on the pencil, edit reminder. We can change the date, the time, and the description. We wanna do this at 7.15. We click on save. That's how you change a personal reminder in Google Calendar. How to complete or remove a personal reminder. You can remove a reminder from your calendar by marking it as done, deleting it, or hiding it. If I wanna delete this right here, I can click on delete reminder, the trash can. If I want to mark an event as done, you'll see if I come down here, mark is done, that'll show up in my completed reminders and that it is now off my list. If I want to hide all reminders quickly from my calendar, I can just click right over here and all of the reminders will disappear from my Google Calendar or reappear. You'll notice here that I have one event here that's marked as done. I've called grandpa. If I click on the little Google Keep icon, I can click there. It'll take me back to Google Keep and show that that reminder has been taken care of. The next section we'll talk about sharing and viewing calendars. In this section of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to share your calendar, view other people's calendars, create shared calendars, import and export events and calendars, delete a calendar, add out of the office dates to your calendar. This is a big one. You might wanna sit down, bunker down for a minute. Sharing your calendar. There's some things that you need to think about before you share your calendar what events go on that calendar, who you're gonna be sharing it with, and do you wanna share it publicly to the web? To do that, we click on settings, go down to settings. Over here at the bottom, we wanna click on the calendar that we want to edit. You'll notice I have a lot of different calendars. In the access permissions, when we click on access permissions, we have a couple of different options here. To make the calendar available publicly on the web, you can click right here and it'll ask you, are you sure you wanna do this? I can click okay. And then that is now public on the web. When I click on the drop down arrow, I can give them the ability to see all events or see only free and be busy hidden details. Well, this is a calendar that doesn't pertain to the public, only in our district. So I'm actually gonna unclick that here. To make the calendar visible only for people in my organization, which is Jordan District, I click here, again, I have the same options here. See only free and busy details. See all of the events. To get the shareable link with one other person individually, I can click here, click that shareable link. When I copy this and paste this into the URL or the web browser, you'll see that this will actually pull up the calendar. That's not the publicly viewed link. 
The publicly viewed link looks something like this. And that's actually a different link. To get the HTML version of a calendar, click here, click on settings. On the left hand side, go to the calendar that you want to grab, get the shareable link, copy this link, and then send that, per send that link to the person you want to share with. You also have the ability to share your calendar with a specific person. If I click add people here, I'll add Ammon, I'll send it there. I have the option to make changes to events, make changes and manage sharing, see only free busy high details. I can basically, like a Google Doc, give him the ability to edit and change those events, dates, manage sharing on that Google Calendar. You can also share your calendar with people that don't use Google Calendar. Let's say they're at MSN or Yahoo. When you send them an invite, it will also send them an invitation to join Google Calendar, to sign up for Gmail and create an account that way. I can click the address here, give them the event to see all of these different things. Bob at yahoo.com is about to get an email to my calendar. So I'm actually gonna delete him so he doesn't see the events on this calendar. How to view other people's calendars. This is a great ability to see if somebody's available to meet. You can actually view their calendar if they've made it shareable. So on the left hand side of Google Calendar, we can click on add other calendars. You'll see that we can create a new calendar. We can browse resources. We can browse calendars of interest. We can pull it from a URL. We can port, import a calendar, which we'll show you how to do a little bit later, or I can subscribe to a calendar. When I click on subscribe to a calendar, I can start typing the person, Ross, who I work with on a daily basis, if he has made his calendar public. You'll see now that I have Ross and Ammon's calendar right next to my calendar. So when I view my calendar, I can see if they can attend a meeting. Maybe we're doing a job interview together or a position interview or a teacher interview. I can see their calendars next to mine. Now that I'm in my calendar view, all I need to do is simply click on Ammon or Ross to see what their schedule looks like for the week. So looking at this next week, we'll go to a week view. You'll see now that I have my calendar pulled up in yellow. The red is Ammon and the brown is Ross. Well, you'll notice on Monday the 2nd, we all have a similar meeting together. Well, that's the admin conference that we're gonna be at together. You'll also notice this other meeting. Well, this is a Monday morning meeting where we schedule, all three of us, what the week is going to look like at the elementary, the middle, and the high school so we don't interfere with each other and our teachers have the space to work and do what they need to do. If someone has made their calendar public in your organization, you can look at their calendar and see if there are any events that are going to be compromised or cause conflict in your Google Calendar. To remove those, I simply unclick here. How to create shared calendars in Google Calendar. In addition to your own calendar, you can create shared calendars to track group activities, project schedules, coworkers vacations, other things like that. So you wanna open calendar, which we're here. On the left-hand side, we'll go down to other calendars. We'll click on the plus sign, click on create new calendar. We'll give our calendar a name. We can add a description if we want. Here's the owner. When we're done with that, we click Create Calendar. You'll notice now that that calendar shows up on my list of calendars. I can adjust the time zone. You have optional, we can change the settings in the view, which is what we're going to do next. Do not show invitations. We can auto accept invitations that do not conflict. We can automatically all invitations to this calendar. When we go to Share with Specific People, again, we have the option to share this with an organization different groups of people. Once we share this calendar with those other people, they can put events into that calendar. For example, I have a shared calendar with the other two administrators. If they're taking the day off or if one of our admin assistants is taking the day off, we update it on the calendar so we can see everything that's happening on that calendar. Let's show you what that looks like. You'll notice on this shared calendar that we have events of who's at what location on which day of the week. We have days and times of different meetings, this will also be shared with our teachers so that they can reserve rooms at the specific locations once the school year gets started. Next, I'll show you how to import and export events and calendars in Google Calendar. To import and export events and calendars. So you can import an event information to your calendar, export your calendars. Let's show you how to do that. So you're gonna click on settings here, down again on settings, we want to make sure that we have the right calendar. 
can see this information over here. You might be able to already see it. It's right up here in the top left where we click on import and export. Here, we have a zip file if we want to export. When we click export, right here, we can just click on export. This will download a file, a zip file. When I unzip that file, you can see here that I have a folder which will now have the calendars in this specific calendar. There's a previous tutorial that you can link up to that goes into details on how to import the calendar. It's a great way to add events from different calendars so you don't have to add them individually. I'll show you quickly how to do that here. We would select a file from the computer Click on Open, Import. We would click here, select the file on our computer, click Open, which calendar we want to put it on, Mr. Campbell Rocks. We click Import right there. Zero out of zero events have been imported. Now, if there were multiple events, those events would be imported on that calendar. This is the calendar that we just created right here, the shared calendar for the tutorial. Next, I'll show you how to delete a calendar. When you click on Settings, Again, if we're in the normal calendar setting, click on Settings, Settings again, scroll down to the bottom. We have the shared calendar here. We can go all the way down to the bottom and click on Delete. Now maybe we're also subscribed to somebody else's calendar. That's where we could do that here, but we click on Delete. Are you sure you want to do this? We can permanently delete this calendar. It no longer exists in our calendar settings. Now I'm going to show you how to add out of the office dates to your Google Calendar. Now I'm going to show you how to add out of the office dates to your Google Calendar. This is a workspace specific paid version in Google Calendar. If you're on the free Google Calendar, this option is not available to you. We click on add a new event. You'll see here that I have the out of the office option. You'll want to make sure that the first date you select for out of the office is the date that you're going to be gone. Now you'll see that we have some dates that we need to put into play. How long is this going to happen? Is this going to be all day long? You'll see that repeating out of the office entries are now available for more flexible work schedules. It's something that's been added new. It'll automatically decline meetings for you. It'll be public to everybody. And you'll see here that I have this option to repeat for daily, weekly, custom. Let's do custom. Every day, and it ends on July 30th. I'm gonna be out for a week. You'll notice that it's already starting to update my calendar. It's all day. Automatically define, decline, automatically decline new meetings during this time. Save and decline. You'll notice now that if somebody tries to send me an invite for the next week or so, my calendar will not accept that and it will give them a response that I'm out of the office. You can also do this through an autoresponder in Gmail, which is a whole nother tutorial. To remove the out of the office reply, simply click on the first day of the event, delete the event, not only this event, all events connected to this reoccurring event, click OK, and you'll see that for the next week, my schedule is still available. I haven't deleted any other events. In this portion of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to customize your Google Calendar, how to manage event notifications, how to choose your calendar view, how to change your calendar's look, and some other small tweaks to your Google Calendar. Let's jump in. Again, we're going to start in Settings. So up here, next to the week, we're going to click Settings, click Settings again. We want to make sure that we're down here working on the calendar that we are selecting. So once we're in our calendar settings, there's a lot of different things that we can change, that we can update, that we can move around. So if we click on general, we'll have our language and region, we'll have our time zone, we'll have our world clock, we'll have our event settings. Do we want to make them 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, default, default, default guest permissions, when we invite others, they can see the guest list. You can unclick those. I like to do that. Automatically add invitations. When somebody sends us a calendar invite, do we want to automatically have it on our calendar? 
I click yes, always. We can, we can also automatically add Google Meet video conferences to the events that I create. Here we have the notifications, desktop notifications. We can have those off, on, and we can add alerts. Do we want it to play notification sounds? I do not. So I keep my desktop notifications here like this and I can remove the sound option there. I can snooze notifications here. I can remove my weekends. I can show declined events. I can show weak numbers. I can display shorter events in the same size. I can reduce the brightness. There's a lot of different options that you have here. My custom view is five days. I work in education, most likely you do too. We don't generally have things going on on the weekend. You'll have option events from Gmail. You can read it here, but the privacy of others, I put only me. Keyboard shortcuts enabled. We'll talk more about that in tricks and tips. It'll save you a bunch of time. You can also turn off online. You can turn on offline calendar or turn off online calendar by clicking that here. Next, let's talk about your calendar view. Now we'll talk about your Google calendar view. Up here next to the gearbox, we talked about this a little bit in the introduction, but you have a bunch of different options here. You can click on day, you can click on a week, a month, a year. I'll show you what that looks like. There's the whole year calendar. There's the scheduled calendar, which is great. I use this a lot when I'm sharing this information with our community in our weekly email or our teachers. I'll just take a screenshot of all the events happening that week share it with the community along with the calendar link so they can see what's happening. Maybe you can post this on your social media accounts, Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or Snapchat. I can click on the five day work week. And you'll notice that these get a little bit bigger. I like the month view. This view is connected with how you change your calendar view settings. We spent a little bit of time in the previous tutorial. If we, again, if we go click on here, click on settings, click on general, scroll down here to our view options. This is where you'll have an additional set of options that you can select and change the way that your calendar is viewed or what color it is. Let's talk about how to change your color. This is how you can change the color of what your events look like for your entire calendar. If you come over here to your calendar, click the three dots here, you'll have the option to grab a specific color or grab it on a slider, go here. So you'll notice now that those calendar events have gone to a brownish color. I usually keep my different calendars different colors. If I need to have a specific colored event, I will change that per the event, but I don't normally change those specific event colors because they show up on specific calendars. So you how you can change the colors and the density of your calendar. So if I come up here to settings and click density and color, I have it right now set on modern with white text. You can go to the classic with black text. You'll see here that all of those changed. Depending on the color of your calendar, white text or black text either pops or doesn't. Information density, compact, we can make it. You'll see that this is a lot more compact and I can see more hours, more time, more events over here. And that's the entire calendar view here. If I go back to month view, you'll see how much that's kind of combined everything here. So if I click here, density and color again, responsive to your screen, it just shows up a little bit bigger. If I'm on a larger screen, it'll be responsive to that screen. I have a second monitor that's 32 inches. The calendar usually takes up the whole thing and I can see events in a little bit more specific detail there. That's how you can change your Google Calendar settings, density and color. Next tutorials, we'll talk about how to access notes and tasks and then we'll move on to tips, tricks, and productivity helps. One of the beautiful things that Google has really worked hard on is the workspace. They're trying to integrate all of their apps so they work seamlessly together. So you don't have to open, open, you don't have to open Google Keep and open Google Calendar or Contacts. All of that information is right there in the Google app that you're working with. Right here, you can see that we have Google Calendar. So now I'm gonna show you how you can access your Google Keep notes and your Google Keep tasks. Over here on the right sidebar, there's another tutorial that you can watch where I explain how the sidebar works. You'll notice that I have Keep, Tasks, Maps, and Zoom for G Suite here. If those aren't available, you'll need to talk to your administrator who's over your Google account to add those. The beautiful thing again, when I click on Keep, my Keep notes actually show right here. 
You'll notice I have some personal keep notes here. Keep track of what my sons and my family wants when we go to eat or when we're at a barbecue. But I can actually here add a note or a task right from Google Calendar. So I want to take a note. Done. That note is here. I don't need to do anything else. If you want to learn more about Google Keep, again, you can go to the tutorial that I've put together for Google Keep. If I want to edit a note, I can come in here and edit this. I can delete this. I can open it in Keep. I can archive this note. I can also mark it as done. So when I click on done, that disappears from my Google Keep notes. You can also create task lists straight from Google Calendar. When I open tasks, you'll see at the top that I have a drop down menu for my tasks. I have a task list for Kelsey Peak. I have my tasks. I can create a new list. When I name it, click done. You'll see that I don't have a task yet, but I want to add something right now. So let's add a task for edit this video. Date and time, we're going to do tomorrow, say 3 o'clock. Click OK. This has now been added to my task list. Again, if I want to go back to my tasks, I have a list of all of these to switch over, go to video tutorials, and there it is. If I want to add other items or apps or add-ons to Google Calendar, I can come right here to the plus sign, and it will give me options of different add-ons that work with Google Calendar hundreds of them. All of them have individual purposes, time-saving things, different things like that. If you want to install the app, just select the event, click on installed. What you'll also notice is Google Apps that you already have connected or installed are right here. I have Zoom installed. It's right over. This is a big one for educators, attendance taker for classroom. I'm sure it's probably a paid item. If it has not been approved for my district, it's not allowed by the install by admin. Cisco WebEx, if I click install, it's gonna ask for my permissions. I would then install that, and that would show up in my Google Calendar sidebar. Up next, we're gonna talk about tips and tricks for Google Calendar, then productivity. Welcome back to the Google Calendar tutorial. This section is on tips and tricks. These are the items that really save you time energy and frustration and just make you more productive. So the first one I call find a time. So I click to add an event and I want to find a time that works for everybody. Well, for me, this is my calendar here. As I start adding guests, that's my admin assistant or the other principal. What it will do is it will show me their calendars and events that they have on their calendars so that I can find a time that works for all three of us. It's great because you don't know when everyone is free, and so you can hopefully avoid a series of conflicts and excuses and emails back and forth and all of those other items because you have their calendar right in front of you if they've made that public. Now, within an organization, I can see anybody's calendar within my organization. So as I add more people to this calendar, it gets a little bit more complicated right? I don't necessarily have a time that will work with everybody. That's when you would have to go through all of the emailing back and forth. But if it's just a small meeting with the three of you, then you can actually see what other events are on other people's calendars. So that's how you find a time in Google Calendar. The next tip and trick that I want to show you how to do is it's maybe not a huge time saver, but it allows you to add video conferencing to a meeting built right in, whether that's a Zoom meeting or a Google Meet meeting. I'm gonna make this a Zoom meeting with one click of the button. I don't have to select an ID. I don't have to create any sort of additional items. When I invite people to this, you'll notice that all of the Zoom information here is at the bottom. As I add guests to this, he will get an email, Ammon will get an email that has all of this information here. It'll have the call in number. It just makes things so much easier. Now, if I removed this and I added a Google Meet, you'll notice 
it'll also have the Meet link right in there as well. So whether you're using Google Meet or Zoom or another third-party conferencing tool, it fills right in and makes things much more efficient for you as a Google Calendar user. The next trick and tip that I highly recommend is shortcuts. Below, you'll see a link to a Google Doc that will have the shortcuts that you can print off and just put them right next to your monitor or on your laptop. Once you use them for a couple of weeks, you'll memorize them. So the first thing you want to do is search, which is Shift Plus. This allows me to search for people. The next quick shortcut that I use is the letter C. When I click on C, it automatically creates a new event for me. I can add the time and the date right there. If I click K, it goes to the previous month, or P will do the same thing. If I want to go to the next month, I can click J or N for next. I use P and N. P for previous, N for next. P again for previous, N for the next month. The next one is T. Let's say I'm looking in the future. When I click on T, it automatically jumps to today. The other one that you can use is backspace or delete. If I click on an event, just click delete. Do I want to send the invitations? Boom, it deletes right then. I don't actually have to go up to the trash can. I'm not going to delete this. This is a date with my wife tonight. But I have out of office. I want to delete that. All the events, okay, that disappears. Next is shortcuts on how to switch your view. So I can select one or D for a day view, two or W for a week view, three or M for the month view, four or X for the seven day view, or I can click on five for the agenda or A for the agenda view. Again, I will share a list with you on a Google Doc so you can see all these, but once you get used to them, you can jump through your views by just hitting individual keys. If you want to give your calendar more information on your scheduled events, you can change the format density, other things like that by changing the color. We showed that in a previous tutorial. The other huge time saver and trick and tip for me is to send an email to a group or an invitation to a group. Instead of finding all the people that you need to invite to that group, if it's a regular meeting group, you can add events through a group link. You would do that by going to contacts.google.com, creating a contact list or a group list. Your administrator, your Google administrator can also create that list, but let me show you what that looks like. When I add guests here, I've created a contact list called Kelsey Peak Staff, which is all of the staff members that are connected with my new middle school. When I click on Kelsey Peak Staff, it'll automatically invite everybody connected to that group that I created in Google Contacts. Now, while it may take a few seconds to create a new Google Contact list, it will save you hours and hours of time throughout Google Calendar so you don't have to hunt down individual members of that. Another great tip and trick is changing ownership in Google Calendar. This also changes the ownership of the Google Meet or whoever's hosting currently. Google's working on a work around that so you can have multiple owners of Google Meet or host events. But for right now, until that comes out, after you've created an event, come up to the three buttons here. You'll have the option to change owner and then you can type in the new owner of that event. Currently, this is how you change owner of Google Meet meetings. They're working on an update. The other great trick and tip is a daily agenda or a daily email of what's happening that day. I really like to get a to-do list, an email of what's happening that day. So you can do that manually or you can just have Google Calendar send it to you automatically every morning. It'll also do it on your phone as well. It's fantastic. So the way that you do that is click on settings, settings here, settings for my individual calendars, under other notifications, you'll see here that you have daily agenda. 
you want to make sure that that's changed from none to email. You'll get an email with your daily agenda every morning. Another great trick and tip is to adjust your all day notifications or your event notifications. Depending on the event, you may want to change the time of how soon that event gives you the notification notification for all day event notifications. I have it email me the day before regular email notifications. I have it email me 10 minutes before that event is supposed to happen. Now you can change that to 24 hours, 48 hours. You can change it to whatever you want. What works best for you. I can add an additional notification to all day events. So you could have multiple events. You could have one a week before the day before, depending on the event. Again, this is you again, you can change this under the specific calendar settings, event notifications, all day notifications. And then again, under other notifications, you have these options here. Another trick and tip is actually adjusting your notifications on your actual device. So if you've got everything set up correctly in Gmail, you may want to on your computer, change your notifications so that you get none or alerts. Sometimes there's a miscommunication between Google calendar and what's happening on your other device. So you want to make sure that those are set the way you want them. So mine is a banner. I'll get a little banner that pops across here. You know how to work a Mac if you don't, right? There's another tutorial for that, but this is where the notifications would come in. You want to make sure that those are up to date. Another great tip or trick is to share your calendar with your partner and your family so that they can see events happening at work. There's been a number of times where I've scheduled events that are outside of school hours and they conflict with something that's happening in my family, whether that's soccer practice, ballet practice, baseball practice. And so there are things that you can actually share. You can share events from that calendar with your partner and make sure that they can see all those events on their calendar. So when they're scheduling things for the family or for the two of you together, there's not conflicts. Another great tip or trick, and this will probably work in the business world much more effective than it would in the school or education world, but setting up a secondary time zone. So for example, I live in Utah, we're on mountain time, but if I did business with California or New York, I may want to add secondary time zones here. And I could pull up Eastern time zone or Pacific time zone and it would show up in my calendar. So when I'm scheduling meetings, I would know whether that's outside of those business hours or if there's going to be a conflict with that instead of trying to do the conversion all the time. The other tip and trick that I have is to browse public calendars so you don't forget certain events. So when I click on other calendars, browse calendars of interest, it's going to pull up holidays in regional countries, global religious holidays. I have the options of sports teams, phases of the moon. So let's pick, I already have this football, national football league. I'm a big Chicago bears fan. That calendar now will be added right there to my Google calendar. And so when I go back, We'll go forward a couple months. You'll see here on Sundays that I have the Chicago Bears schedule right here on my calendar. Again, we've got a Sunday night special Bears and Packers right there, and it'll pull up. There's their bye week on the 19th. All of their games will pull up in my Google Calendar now. It'll send me a notification, and it'll remind me when the game starts, if it's a day game, an afternoon game, a night game, or a Monday night game. Another great tip or trick that I recommend is just dragging and dropping. So say you have an event here on a Wednesday, instead of clicking on it, opening it, editing it, you can just grab it, move it to the other day. It will ask you to email the guests of that event to let them know that it's changed. Again, you can drag and drop and move that back. Another great tip or trick to use is appointment slots. When you create a new event, you can create appointment slots. Maybe it's monthly interviews, maybe it's back to school night, parent teacher conference, and you want parents to sign up for individual slots. Noted that this is only a workspace option for the paid version of workspace. It does not come in the free version. 
To do that, you would click appointment slots here, or you can watch the other video tutorial that I have that goes in a lot more detail about how to add appointment slots and invite people to select time slots, and that'll be linked above. So this next one is how to find or add invisible events. So what you do is you come to your calendar here. We'll go to August 11th. I'm going to add a new event, invisible. When I come down here to default visibility, I wanna make sure that I put free and then click on private. This shows up only to me. Even if I've shared my calendar with other people to view, I can have private invisible events happening to my Google Calendar. The other great tip, trick, and productivity hack is to use the search bar. When I click on the search bar, I have the option very much like Gmail. I can click on my active, call, active calendars. I can enter a person. I can enter a place. Doesn't have. I can look for specific dates. So I'm typing in Goblin. This is an event that happened almost five years ago at a school I worked at. When I click there, it'll pull up that event, October 2017, Wednesday. There was a note to myself about something to contact somebody about shirts for a goblin chase. It was an activity that we did at the middle school. This last tip and trick and productivity hack has saved me hours and hours of time. What it allows me to do is it allows me to add an event to multiple calendars at the same time. Why would I want to do this? Well, we have a school calendar, which is in green, and then we have an outward facing calendar, which goes to the community. There are events that are on both, and there are some events that the community doesn't necessarily need to know about what we're doing on Fridays as far as our PLC goes. So when I've, what I've done is I've created our public out facing calendar as a guest or a contact. So when I add an event and I add a guest, it gives me the option to add that calendar. And so then when I click save, what you'll see is that it will shortly show up on that other calendar so that our community can see that. I can add multiple events to multiple calendars with one calendar event creation. It saves me hours of time throughout the school year. When I delete this event, it also deletes it on every calendar that's connected to it takes a second for the process to work, but you'll notice that this purple test will disappear. That event has been uh, deleted, so now our teachers and our community don't have access to that event. Thank you for watching this video all the way till the end, and thank you for what you do for kids on a daily basis. If this video saved you time, energy, and frustration, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share it with your teacher friends. You can subscribe by clicking up here, or you can watch another video either here or here. Again, I love you, I appreciate you, and I'm glad that you're here.